In this episode, we're going to talk about the day-to-day maintenance required for keeping an old English sheepdog in coat. They have a double coat, which means they need to be maintained to keep it from matting and, of course, becoming a nightmare. That is... See, and if you feel this, it's really harsh uh, texture. Yeah, it is. It's wiry, yeah. That is correct. That is, okay. Yeah, and you can feel it, and if you feel it, it, you can hear it. And that's, I don't know. I don't know if I can hear it. I actually can hear it. You can't hear it. Yeah. Oh, wait. Here we go. He has this, you know, they have a double coat. With him, because the the coat is so correct, I never have to tease this up. I just It just, yeah, fluffity fluff. That's it, and it stays there. Eight-year-old trainer is the perfect model for how to get this done. So, here we go. You asked and I listened. I have been filming a stockpile of more grooming episodes and they are jam-packed with so many cool tips and techniques that can be used on a plethora of breeds. So comment below with what breed you'd like to see, like and share this video with your friends, and be sure to subscribe if you haven't done so yet because of course I want you to ring that little bell so you don't miss one episode. I don't think it will surprise anyone when I say the first and most important thing you need to do is brush your Old English. Those pin brushes she talked about in episode one, yeah, they're going to be your new best friend. And you're going to learn a new phrase called line brushing. With this much hair, this technique is your surefire way to make sure that you have a brush through the entire coat. So you make a line. Yeah, you make practically a line. Okay. And you see here, there's the skin also. Uh-huh. So you can yep, see, see the skin. See. Yep. Everybody has their own way of doing it. But Edie recommends that you start at the back near the tail and you make yourself a line going up towards the head and brush it out going up the line. When I have the first line done, I'm actually going through the rear. I'm, I'm going, I'm continuing here. Uh-huh. This whole section here, I'm going like this. You repeat that over and over again, working from the tail to the head until you've gone over the entire dog. That is thick. Yeah, it has a lot of thick hair. And mine is almost eight years old. She likes to follow the leg line at the hock and then brush the hair back and then all the way up across the back up to the neck. You do this on one side of the dog, and then of course flip them over and do it on the other side. And I go, I just to go down the leg here. I don't really have a plan, but this is normally how I do it. Other people do it differently. They go actually from line to line, and I don't. I, I just go this way. Right. For me, it's the easiest because then I have one leg done. Right. So you're using the legs. I am using the leg. Yeah, like this. Okay. While you're there at the back end, especially on a male dog, not only do you need to take special care with your brush, but there are usually a collection of mats in that area. For obvious reasons, right? (laughs) Instead of using the brush, she recommends that you work them through with your finger. So I see what you're doing where you're using your hands. See, using my hands here. I mean, you know, these these sections here, you get mats pretty easy. And yeah. This is not a big one. It's just a little one. And I do not really want to cut everything away here. Right. Just to make it easy. No, I just, you know, so there you go. See, it's all gone. Granted, she brushes her dog's on the regular so large mats are not an issue but this is a perfect example as to why you need to brush your dog on a regular basis so, okay so you're going down to the skin yeah yeah see right here. yep okay and when i say regular she does this every two to three days on all of her dogs when i'm at shows i just brush real quick through him so you might get these little webs in there but they're, they're actually very light like right. Okay. Little web. I leave them when I'm at the show. I leave them in. When I come, you know, it it makes it gives you a bit more volume. I was gonna say it would give you more body for it sure. Gives you volume, yeah. But you have to be really careful. We call it controlled matting. Controlled matting. Okay. Yeah. See, like like these things here. You know, just I would at the show would leave, just leave, leave it that in. there. Right. When I come home, it's gonna be all groomed out. Okay, so you're gonna groom them again once you get home. Oh, well, yeah. yeah, you gotta get all the product out. Yeah, and I just, I make sure that all the webs are gone, the the controlled matting. And when she finds somewhat of a larger mat, yep, that's when she pulls out the standard slicker brush. Ah, so that's where you would use that, okay. That's it. Oh, see, that was easy. (laughs) 
Here I was expecting like this big, huge ordeal. Yeah, no, it's not a big deal. No, it's not a big deal. Anything bigger than that, again, all it takes is a little magic with the fingers. Just using your thumbs and fingers, gently separate them and then brush it out. And you preserve the coat. This is not... No, I mean, this that's, is that's, little, whatever. Yeah. Just... Oh, excuse me. You can throw me on the floor. <laughs> yeah. This is a dog room, my God. Now, I got to watch the process from start to finish. Working from the hind leg to the front leg on one side and then the other. And here are a few of my observations. A fully coated dog like this has been trained as a puppy to stay on the grooming table for the entire process. No distress, no discomfort, just pure relaxation. Like when my kids were little and I'd have them brush my hair, like, oh my God, it would put me right to sleep. Also, surprisingly, it only took about an hour and a half. She says it might take up to two hours, but of course, she also regularly is brushing her dog, so they're never really full of mats. To fully brush out, bathe the whites, and dry an old English sheepdog, that's about three hours. To bathe and dry the entire dog, that's an entire day's affair. So, back to brushing out the dog. Once you've found your way up towards the face, that's when you're going to need a few additional tools, like that wide tooth comb. Saliva is one of the most natural juices that you can't avoid. When your dog eats, breathes, licks, pants, well, you know, like actually live, their saliva is going to get into their coat. You work through those clumps around the mouth as well as around the eyes with either the wide tooth comb or of course, your fingers. Don't forget those little eye boogies. As a little side note here, I thought I would mention that many breeds, including my own, deal with tear and food stains, and I noticed hers were quite minimal. Edie feeds her dogs a raw diet, mostly ground protein, which consists of either salmon or chicken or beef with the occasional vegetables. Of course, we all know that those extra chunky dogs get the special green bean diet. Back to the face. That little spot between the eyes? Here is her awesome tip. Just trim it off, especially if your dog has a nice full coat. It will never be noticeable and most definitely make things a lot easier when pinning it up and, of course, with eye boogies. Now, this is pretty much almost one side of the dog, except inside of his leg here. The last step before you flip the dog over to the other side is to brush out the inside of the bottom leg while it's still facing up. Then she stands him up to get another quick brush all over and then, yep, flip it do da day to do the exact same thing just on the other side of the body. So that is one whole side done. And now, on to the other side. Next step, do a little pre-treat. This one you do about 30 minutes before you bathe them, so right before you flip would be the perfect time. Using the Good Vibrations Unlimited Whitening Shampoo, place some on those tear stains as well as the stains around the mouth so you can let it soak in while you're brushing the other side. With this breed, you brush them out before you bathe them because never, ever, ever, ever do you bathe a dog with mats. You will never get them out. And of course, if you have extreme mats, you're gonna shave the dog anyway. So brush and then bathe. And while we are demonstrating the general maintenance between shows, when it comes to grooming for a show, she is only going to bathe the whites of the dog. She starts with a diluted mixture of water and the Blue Diamond Plus shampoo and conditioner. After rinsing out all of that, then she goes over it again with white lightning. Of course, the first place she wets and shampoos is the head, working on all of those pre-treated areas. After the head has been washed, she moves on to the other white areas on the body. In Trainer's case, of course, those are his legs and feet. This is where she pulls out that Good Vibrations Unlimited and goes to town. As with all whitening shampoos, you lather it up, let it sit for 5 to 10 minutes, and then rinse. This double-coated breed has some thick-ass hair, so getting out all of that shampoo is a tedious process, but it is also a must. We all know how shampoo left in the coat can attract dirt, so rinse and then rinse and rinse again. And by the way, rinse one more time, just to be sure. From the tub... Ah! Yeah, well, we all got wet. <laughs> back to the table, because now it's time for the dryer. An Air Force dryer, unless you're extremely careful, will mat the crap out of your dog's coat. So, an adjustable heat dryer is the easiest way to go. 
set it on a low heat, and grab that Mason Pearson's brush, working from the skin and brush out and dry away. And another reason to brush them out before you dry them? Drying a lot quicker than I thought it would. There's a lot of underfoot pads yeah. already. Oh, okay, yeah, out. yeah. Now, she does use the pin brush on the body, but the Mason Pearson, it's a very special brush, and that she uses on the face, and it's beyond worth the investment. It's not just about the quality and the durability of the brush. Well, this actually, they, this takes out, to me, in that coat, it takes out too much coat. But this is The just, pin does? The pins yeah, the, take out too much coat? No, this. Oh, that this, takes out too much coat. for the head, this is gentler than a pin brush. Okay. And why does she recommend the Madden brushes over all of the other pin brushes? Again, it's all about quality. When you're brushing dogs as much as you need to brush this breed, you want a good quality brush. The pins and Madden brushes stay in place. They don't bend and they don't push back into the base. And just as you do with the initial pre-bath brushing, you start on one side of the body, roll them over, and then go to the next. The second side is always, goes always quicker than the first side because they're laying on the towel and the towels takes up all the, all the, the water. Oh, there you go. Once the dog is completely dry, if we were going into the show ring, she would grab some dry breeze and spray it into the coat on the head to give it some extra texture. You can also use a mixture of colostrum and chalk helper for the same results. This is when you would grab that teasing brush and tease away. This is very 80s-esque, by the way. I'm loving it. 80s? 80s. I yes. was... I do too. I love it too. I used to have big hair. Yes, me too. I love it. To safely go around the ring, you would tease it up and then push it back. So, of course, the dog could actually see when it's moving. That's pretty much it. It's as detailed and as simple as that. But guess what? Edie invited me to come back in another month so that she can grow out all that hair and then show us how to cut and groom the head for show from scratch. So, until then, enjoy the results of this amazing maintenance groom. Drunk and grooming. Drunk and grooming. My cabernet. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers.